What's up guys and welcome back to Wall Street Millennial. Today we're going to review some of the most insane gains and losses on the Wall Street Bets forum of the past week so we can learn from other traders' experiences. If you like this content, make sure to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. So without further ado, let's get into the first fail. First off, we have user I Got Options and Puts, who has been having a rough year in the markets, losing $10,615, or just about 69% of his portfolio since June of 2020. During this time, the broader stock market was in a tremendous bull rally, with the SPY increasing 23%. Most of his losses came from buying puts, betting the market would go down, a strategy that obviously did not work well in 2020. But he also made some long plays, buying calls more recently. In 2021, he had two small spikes in his portfolio from the GameStop and Rocket Company short squeezes, but unfortunately, he didn't take profits and lost all of his gains and then some. During the Rocket Company's short squeeze, he bought three 46 strike call options expiring March 5th, which turned out to be big winners, increasing in value by more than $2,600 at the time of this post on March 3rd. Unfortunately, by the expiry date of March 5th, shares had fallen 36% from the peak and closed at $26.82, leading his calls to expire worthless. In addition to buying calls, he also loaded up on Rocket shares, which made up 34% of his portfolio on March 4th and incurred a 14% mark-to-market loss. He did some due diligence on Rocket companies and understood the key drivers of the stock price, including the special dividend that they announced, the high short interest, and the FOMO that will drive the price even higher once it starts to squeeze. His thesis was actually correct and Rocket stock increased significantly on March 2nd and March 3rd, yielding him massive gains on his calls. Unfortunately, he didn't know to take profits and diamond hands the position, thinking it would keep going up. This just goes to show the importance of taking at least some profits when your positions are moving favorably, especially when you're playing options. If you never take any profits, you have a high probability of eventually losing everything like this Wall Street Bets user. Next we have a gain on ExxonMobil, courtesy of user Lenders97. He had several long-dated call option contracts on Exxon, with strike prices of $60, $70, and $75. They all expire in January of 2022. He also holds one put option at a $50 strike price, expiring this April. His reasoning for holding both calls and a put on the same stock is that he views the put as a hedge. He has a long-term positive outlook on ExxonMobil, which he wants to benefit from by buying long-dated calls. However, in the short term, no one can predict the movements of any stock. So if ExxonMobil doesn't do well in the short term, he can benefit from the puts and then roll those gains into either stock or more long-dated calls at the cheaper price. However, as user TreeHugChamp says, this strategy is very similar to a straddle in which you benefit from large movements in either direction. The downside is that you have to pay a lot of premium from buying both the calls and the puts, and there's a very real risk that neither of them will pay out. However, ExxonMobil's strong price action in recent weeks has made the OP's asymmetrical exposure to the upside pay off. Exxon's stock has done very well since October, as many analysts have upgraded it on expectations for a better future for oil prices and the economy in general. Also, last week, activist investor Jeff Ubin was added to the board of the company in a move that immediately sent the stock higher. Many investors view it as part of a necessary board shakeup to bring in the next era for the company. The prestigious hedge fund D.E. Shaw had been pushing for board changes at Exxon for a while. Next off, we have user Hanritz, who finds himself in the unfortunate position of having lost 92% of his portfolio, or a staggering $114,773 in the past month alone. He started making some small losses in the beginning of the month, and this made him feel desperate to make some successful YOLOs to recuperate his losses. At the same time, he was under a lot of stress from his job, so was not in a good state of mind for thinking rationally about trading strategies. While he didn't disclose what positions were responsible for his 90% loss, he was likely playing FDs on Wall Street Bets meme stocks and getting destroyed by Theta. After bagging the massive loss, he sold out all of his positions and decided to take a break from the markets, which have exhausted him both financially and mentally. He already feels much better now, not having to constantly worry about how his portfolio is doing. And at least he is gainfully employed, which is fortunate in this economic environment. While the official unemployment rate has decreased to 6.2% in the month of February, if you include people who have left the labor force altogether, the real number is closer to 10% as a pandemic has devastated many small businesses. And the fact that he had more than $100,000 to lose in the first place means he probably was making a decent salary. Next we have another but much bigger Exxon Mobil gain. User Ground to Flight Deck was all in with 31 contracts of unknown strike prices on Exxon Mobil, which have made a nice 553% all time, or 15.4% in the past day. The total gain is $31,382. User Zeend Istne approves of the play on oil. Exxon Mobil is really a play on oil prices because its profits are heavily linked to the price it can sell its oil for. 
and the price of oil recently has shot up according to the USO ETF, from $25 a share to $44 a share in only a few months. User Goldfar and Joel Green are also holding long-dated calls on Exxon and still seem to think there's even more room to run. Congratulations on your gains! Next we have user Taste Me Rainbow, who is coming out of such a big hole that even though he is still down 73% all time, he has seen 1,900% gain since his all time low. He mounted his partial comeback by playing US Steel, Spy, Ford, and Tesla. On February 22nd, his portfolio was only worth $26.94. At that point, he exited his positions and bought as many calls on US Steel, ticker symbol X, as he could, and flipped them the next day for $168. From there, he kept making more YOLOs until finally his account reached $5,000. Most recently, he doubled his money in one day by holding puts on Tesla. Tesla's stock has had a rough past few days, and was most recently down from $620 a share to below $550 a share by the middle of the day. By holding puts for about an hour in the morning, this catapulted the OP's portfolio to the $5,000 mark. Now he is holding short-term slightly out-of-the-money calls on SPY and plans to sell some of them in the short-term if the market rises. Congratulations on your epic comeback! Next up we have user C15464, who is yet another Rocket Company's Diamond Hanser who lost almost all of his gains on the position. He loaded up on calls at the beginning of the short squeeze and turned his $35,000 investment into $190,000 at the peak on March 2nd, and shares are now trading at roughly $25 a share, which has taken his portfolio all the way back down to $45,000. This Wall Street Bets user actually did call the top, selling out of his position at pre-market on March 3rd at $47.50 per share which was within a few percentage points of the all-time intraday high. During market hours of that same day, Rocket Company's stock started to fall, and when shares reached $37, he thought this was an obvious bottom and bought back into call options. Unfortunately, he was wrong, and shares have fallen another 32% since then. Despite the loss, he's still up about $10,000 on the position. Some Wall Street Bets users tell him to cash out now while he's still ahead, but he recalls people telling him the same thing about GameStop in January. He took the advice and sold out of his position right before it tripled. Because the past equals the future, he doesn't want to repeat the same mistake and only plans on doubling down on his position and buying even more calls. He currently holds shares and calls of Rocket Companies expiring on March 19th, so he has the potential to make some massive gains if Rocket can go to the moon again within the next couple weeks. We wish you luck. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this week's fails. If you like this content, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for future videos. Also, check us out on Instagram and TikTok if you haven't already. Make sure you're also subscribed to our second channel, WSM Research, where we post regular videos on important updates for high growth tech stocks like Palantir and Corsair Gaming. On a recent video on that channel, we went over the fundamentals of Rocket Companies, noting that it had very high short interest, and the very next day, Rocket Company stock spiked 70%. If you want similar regular updates, check out the channel. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.